All right, everybody. Welcome to the Camels Vlogcast, episode 22. I'm here with Anna. How are you today, Anna? Hello. I'm very good. It's perfect weather outside, so <laughs> it's a good day today. Okay, Anna. Tell us a about, about yourself, your talent, and uh, where you're from, and uh, where you are now. My name is Anna, and I usually ballroom dancer, and I still am, but now I couldn't really dance and teach. So I put myself more into art and I love it, <laughs> but I'm stuck in London now. I actually am originally from Ukraine, but I live in New York for like last time, but I traveled to London for a week and now I'm here for three and a half months. <laughs> oh, great. So what inspired you to start dancing? I just loved it. I went to, with my parents to the concert and I said to them that I wanted. So <laughs> that's how I started. <laughs> So when did you realize you were like really good at dancing and that you could be a professional dancer? Yeah, kind of. I still wasn't sure until the last time. And like for a long time, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it forever. But so after school, I still went, went to university. I did my degree, like a bachelor's mm -hmm. degree. I, uh, but because I wasn't sure if I would be good enough to just put my life totally into dancing. But then I realized that the results are good and everything is possible. So <laughs> I decided to stop mm. with education and didn't go to other job, but moved to America for dancing. Okay. So how do you describe your style in ballroom dancing? Is there a certain style you go by or like that you have practice? Like in ballroom dancing, it's a lot of rules, especially what I'm doing, it's standard. So it's like very classical dances. It's something people used to do like forever on all these balls, all these aristocrats and <laughs> whatever. Uh, so it, it has a lot of rules and you couldn't really go against them a lot, but you, you can do whatever you want. Actually, if you're still in the frame, and you follow the music so i just started to dance with my new partner for like last i don't know from january so i said so it's still pretty new partnership but it feels good so i hope mm -hmm. it will work very well okay great 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 so um in terms of like um in terms of now like you're not able to dance now but um, how are you keeping yourself like fit and able to like uh, adjust yourself to like your dancing so you, you don't lose anything yeah, we're trying at least to keep our stamina well. So I do a lot of runs just around all the city, everywhere I can run. Like a week ago, I did like 21K. <laughs> mm. And we do a lot of workouts, just put some YouTube video and do anything. So, and I'm trying to keep my diet pretty healthy. Mm. I couldn't say I always do it, but mm. I'm trying to. <laughs> So when you're doing these competitions, uh, what's been like the feedback from like the audience and like judges from like your your dancing, your part of dancing? How do people like perceive you? Uh, feedback is good. Like actually, in my new partnership, I only did two competitions, and then we went for lessons and quarantine started. So it's still very new, mm. especially because I danced with my last partner for like ten years. So when you dance for somebody for so long you know everything about like mm -hmm. every possible situation but mm -hmm. now when when it was the first competition like after a break i wasn't able to understand what's going on at all <laughs> it was pretty <laughs> like it it felt great and like luckily we have really good communication with my new partner mm -hmm. but still it was super new so it's hard to expect something so how do you hear you've like grown in like the last 10 years from like from like um, when you first started out to like now? How do you feel you've grown as a dancer? Yeah, in dancing, like my career went very well. I didn't really expect it when I was a kid. I started it just like a hobby. But then when I was around 14, that's when I started with my previous partner. And uh, like each competition was better and better. And then we become second in Ukraine. And I'm like, oh, that probably can work. So mm. we started to travel abroad more and we had some very good results. So, but in Ukraine, you couldn't really earn a lot of money and that is enough for 
your lessons mm. because like our lesson costs in america like around 200 dollars yeah. for 45 minutes and we need to take lessons constantly all the time with a lot of teachers so it's super expensive and if you live in ukraine it's almost impossible to earn this money mm. that's why we decided to move to yes and then our results like went pretty fast upwards <laughs> And now with a new partner, like I didn't expect, but from the first competition, we did very well. We won like the first one competition. And then in second one, we was in a final with very strong competitors. So I'm super happy <laughs> with my <laughs> dancing career. That's great. That's great. So in terms of like the competitions, how many, how many people usually like, compete against you? And like how many dancers and partners do you guys usually compete against? It depends from competition, like the biggest competitions in the world are in England, because it's like from like far time ago, from old times, uh, Blackpool Dance Festival, it's like the most popular in the world. It's already, it's first time they miss it after Second World War. Mm. Uh, so in general, they did already, I think 90 or 91, so years in a row. So it's very old competitions and then two more like these big competitions. So there, if you compete, it's around like 270, 250 couples, mm. 250. Wow, so that's a lot. lot. That's a lot. Wow. But if you dance in the US, like the biggest competitions, mm. like nationals or something, it's probably like four rounds. Mm. So maybe like for like 25 couples, mm. maybe. Um, sometimes around 30, but some smaller competition starts from finals straight away. So it really depends from competition. Mm. So for those that aren't really familiar with dancing, how do you um, find out about comp competitions and how do you enter them to? Do you have like a, you have to have like a, um, like a pre-challenge, a pre-like competition to get in? Actually, if you're involved in dancing, you, it doesn't, uh, look so strange mm. but i understand that from people from outside they don't know any information mm. about it but for us like in america we have one website where all competitions are listed so you can just and every weekend it's three four competitions mm. in different states of course it's not now but in mm. normal life but also in the world we have like websites we know all the competitions so we just we have like main comp few competitions a year that we need to go we don't really if you want to stay in the sport you don't really have a choice you go there mm. so they're already in your calendar like the most important competition it's usually in may now it was postponed to august and i'm pretty sure they'll cancel it mm. <laughs> but really it's very long like in normal life it's very long it's almost Two weeks and you are there you're in the in this little city mm -hmm. almost everybody's there are dancers at this point <laughs> and um, before that you usually go to London a little bit early to take some lessons to get ready to change your time in your head <laughs> Okay, great. So, um, like when you're when you when you're competing, what are some of your thoughts when you're competing and when you're practicing? Like, uh, are you nervous, excited? What's that type of feeling? Of course, like you're always nervous. It doesn't matter how well you was getting ready, you're still nervous. But um, also, it depends a lot from communication in the couple. If you support each other, it helps a lot. Sometimes opposite you fight in and then it doesn't mm -hmm. help. <laughs> but you still go on the floor and when you're on the floor already, you forget about everything, you just dance. So yeah. So with the quarantine now, before the quarantine, uh, what were some of your goals in terms of like ballroom dancing? Like did you wanna enter more competitions? Do you wanna win more? Did you wanna um how did, what was some of the some of your like basic goals for you and your partner? Yeah, because we just started so far, so actually the goal was to compete as much as possible before the Blackpool, the competition that I said, like the biggest one. And then in one category, we really wanted to make a final and do well. But now everything is postponed. So now we're just trying to practice when we can. And it's not always that we can. If Mostly we can dance just in the park on the grass. <laughs> and it's not really good. <laughs> but we're trying to keep ourselves in shape 
Okay, so let's talk about um, another thing that you're really good at, uh, your talent. Uh, your art. Let's talk about your art a little bit. So explain it a little bit like about your art and when it started. Yeah, like from my childhood, I really loved art. And like I li- loved drawing and stuff, but I didn't really have enough time for it. Uh, but once I had, I always was drawing something. Mm. Like in the school, in all my notebooks, it was more drawings than information, basically. Mm. Um, but now when quarantine started, I realized I have too much time because I'm not teaching, I'm not practicing mm-hmm. the whole day. So I had more time and I started to put more art. And then actually my sister called me and said she wanted to um, like decorate her space. She opened like a space for um, hair masters, like makeup artists mm-hmm. in her city where she lives and she was thinking for a long time what she wanted to put on the walls and then she decided she wanted to put my art wow. because she likes the style mm-hmm. and I'm like okay she said you need to get ready it was about like 25 mm-hmm. pictures I'm like, okay I'll try and then when I started to do more and more and more I realized that some of them you can color and because I was I'm living now here with my partner and his little sister. And the other day we was coloring some pictures. And I'm like, oh, actually, my pictures can work for that as well. So I decided to do like my little coloring book with the pictures that fits for that. And then I created a few more. And I really liked it, like at least from how it looks. So I sent a few my friends, my family. So now my grandpa is... Uh, coloring every day my grandmom mm. is coloring <laughs> every day <laughs> so, the sister of my boyfriend and stuff so it's i think people like it that's why mm-hmm. i'm like okay that's <laughs> i'll try to pursue this idea so can you show us some of your art and explain it to the audience please i'm not sure i can explain because okay. it's mostly this, this... Like abstract art but <laughs> okay. I can try. so it could be some picture like this so for example you couldn't really color that it's not mm-hmm. easy because it's not that much space but that i just did before my idea of coloring book <laughs> um but it could be something that you can be color pretty successful and actually i can show some that already colored options and I, so you can see how it works so for example yeah, you see one. So I did this picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then I just tried to color myself to see if I like it. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> and it looks like this. Wow, that's so, really nice too. So how long did it take <laughs> you to um like draw and color it? How long did it take you to like create that total? To draw it actually takes long time because I like I'm doing it hand like by my hands it's not on computer or something and I'm trying to do it accurate enough so it mm-hmm. takes like, probably a few hours for the smallest picture but uh, when I color it I couldn't say it takes long like maybe half an hour hour mm-hmm. uh, but you also there's a lot of options how you can color you can do pencils you can do markers you can do what you color whatever you mm. want i really loved markers and my mom ordered for me like some special professional markers <laughs> so now i'm just enjoying them because i i never knew that markers can be so fun mm. like from my childhood when i tried they hated it but it turns out that they have a lot of really <laughs> nice professional <laughs> markers and colors are beautiful so i like coloring now as well not only creating pictures mm. So in terms of your goals for your art, do you just want to make it a hobby? Are you trying to like sell them? Are you trying to put them in a museum? Or like, what do you, what is your ultimate yeah. goal for your art? I put my Etsy shop like with a coloring book mm-hmm. listing for now. I didn't really try to sell pictures separately for a moment. But also with Etsy, you need really to work hard to make it like visible on internet. Mm-hmm. And I'm not trying to put really this art so much on my personal page because 
like I'm a ballroom dancer, so mm. I don't want all my teachers and friends <laughs> to see it every day and get tired from it. So yeah. I'm supposed to it maybe sometimes. So some somebody already bought a few uh, books and that's nice, but I don't really try to promote it so hard. I mostly mm. do it for enjoying now, and maybe later I can make it work better. I'm trying to. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. <laughs> I came back. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to sell it, but we'll see how it will work. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of any, any artists inspire you or like or, or influence you in your art, any like artists you like, um, like you really enjoy like um, watching their paintings and their drawings? I, I love art in general. Like when, for example, when I lived in New York, like I'm still living in New York. I hope to mm -hmm. get back there soon. But when I uh, when I'm going to any museum like Met or something, that's really beautiful and I, and I love it. And I love watching different artists. I don't really like just normal landscapes or see pictures. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, but somehow it's you like you can watch a photo picture for that. <laughs> but, I like something more crazy, more. <laughs> but mm. I just love it in general, and I like to see it different. So I follow some Instagram like artists that I like. Also. Okay, great. So, um, do you have any advice for young dancers out there and artists out there that want to like um, be professional? Any advice to them? Um, with art, actually, I couldn't uh, give a lot of advice <laughs> because I'm still starting out. Mm. I love it, but and but we'll see how it will go. But for dancers, if somebody will see, just work hard. Like there's no other option. <laughs> mm. You just need to practice a lot. Okay, great. So where can people find you at? What drop your Instagram and your um, Facebook so people go like follow you and find your art. Uh, yeah. So. So how can I put it? You can just um, so you can just say it. You can just tell the audience. You can just spell it out as you say it. Uh, yeah. So that's my name. How it's written actually on the picture. That's my Facebook or Instagram like personal page with a lot of dancing there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but also for art, I created like a new name, Fera Art, like F E R A. Actually, from Latin it means wild. So mm. I think it fits good with the uh, the type of ab abstract art I'm doing. <laughs> So you can find it uh, both in Facebook and Instagram as well with this name. Okay, I like to I like to end these uh, with positive words from you. Anything anything you want to add to or like say to the world or the audience out there, like positive message. Um, now I just hope everything like world will be back to normal soon and world will be enjoying our lives. I think it will be the best idea. Okay. Uh, thank you, Anna, for joining us and talking about your art and your dancing. I wish you good luck in the future, and uh, hopefully everything opens up for you to go back dancing. And um, guys, just check out Anna on uh, Fair yeah. Art and on uh, Facebook. And thank you, Anna, for coming on. I appreciate you. Thank you very much for inviting me. For no problem. Oh, right. It's been, the, it's been the Timeless Vlogcast episode 22. Thank you. I'm out. All right. <laughs> Bye.